Hey everyone, I'm Shilpa, and this next module will cover an urban flooding case study that uses remote sensing data to solve urban flooding related issues. First, let's go over a short refresher on what urban flooding is. To begin with, let's go over how urban flooding is caused. Urban flooding occurs from both natural causes and human error. Natural causes include higher levels of participation and flash floods, river floods and overbank flow, as well as coastal flooding. On the other hand, human causes include drainage and sewage systems at overcapacity, improper management or care towards drainage systems, and concretization causing lower water permeability. Next, let's go over some of the effects of urban flooding. Consequences of urban flooding include building, assets, and utility damages, losses in income from industries, increases in unemployment, halts in transportation systems, and how it's hazardous to human lives. Now, let's go over, over why urban flooding is important. Because urbanization is developing at an incredibly fast and unstable pace, this increases the likelihood of facing more drastic effects of urban flood disasters. Additionally, the growth in population within urban areas makes it more difficult to handle urban flooding disasters. Last, even the UN Sustainable Development Goals deem that it's necessary to strategize the reduction of urban disasters and disaster-related deaths. Finally, let's go over how urban flooding is measured and applied. This includes surface inundation, which is the additional water coverage on land cover, um, or <laughs> water coverage on land, additionally to land cover, which is the type of materials on Earth's surface, and true color image, which expresses data as they would be seen in real life. The satellites and sensors that gather this data include Sentinel-1A and 1B's SAR sensor, although these exclude land cover and true color image, Terra and Aqua's MODIS sensor, as well as Landsat 5, 7, and 8 ETM Plus and OLI sensors. Now, let's go into the case study from NASA's DEVELOP program, titled as New Orleans Urban Development. The subtitle for this case study is Utilizing Earth's Observations to Assist Groundwork New Orleans in Reducing Flood Vulnerability in New Orleans, Louisiana, Metropolitan Area. To provide some background, New Orleans, Louisiana has seen rising sea levels and loud land subsidence, causing flooding in the city to become more frequent and intense. In response, Groundwork New Orleans is, a fo is focusing on supporting green infrastructure in order to make the city more resilient to disasters. However, the initial site selection and assessment practices were inexpensive and took a lot of time. The project set out to help the use of satellite data to support planning for improvements. The team used Landsat 8 Operational Land Imager and Thermal Infrared Sensor, Sentinel 2's Multispectral Instrument, Sentinel 1's C band synthetic aperture radar, and Terra's moderate resolution imaging spectral radiometer, known as MODIS imager from 2013 to 2018. Next, we will go over how the remote sensing data was gathered and analyzed. Due to the Atlantic hurricane season, the data was geared towards summer months. Additionally, areas of high surface runoff and flood vulnerability were mapped out with the remote sensing and geospatial analysis. Furthermore, methodologies to determine these areas include, land, include using land classification, NDVI or normalized difference vegetation index, NDFI or normalized difference flood index, and LST land surface temperature assessment. As for the study's results, it revealed that through land cover classification and NDVI methodologies, green space decreased between 2013 and 2017. Moreover, from 2016 to 2017, flood extent analysis showed increases in flooding. It also showed that the eastern areas of New Orleans were more likely to have a risk of flooding. Additionally, areas with lower permeability were shown to have an increased land surface temperature in comparison to areas of green space. Four end products were produced from this case. The first one is Urban Tree Canopy Assessment, which allows users to identify areas with lower tree coverage 
and provides information on the difference their current tree planting project has on decreasing flood vulnerability in New Orleans. Secondly, their gray infrastructure and impervious surface cover analysis shows areas with an increased risk of surface runoff and flooding based on impervious land cover and includes an annual analysis of New Orleans urban growth to learn about gray infrastructure's impact on land modification. The third product they produced was the flood extent analysis, which contains stormwater surface coverage suitability maps and flood classification maps to help in identifying flooded lands, as well as displaying areas of shallow water and short vegetation lands. Finally, the surface heat assessment provides an annual and seasonal analysis of urban surface temperature to learn how communities and stormwater threats are affected by temperature. It helps identify the correlation between urban cover areas and surface temperature as time goes on. As for our takeaways and additional resources, uh, first we have that urban flooding occurs from both natural causes and human error. Consequences of urban flooding include building, assets, and utility damages, losses in income, unemployment, transportation systems disturbances, and how it's hazardous to human lives. Um, as for the importance, the likelihood of facing more drastic effects of urban flood disasters is increasing, in addition to the importance established by UN's Sustainable Development Goals. Urban flooding is measured and applied through metrics of surface inundation, land cover, and true color image. Finally, we can use satellite imagery to look at flooding risk and extent. As for the actual case study, we can take away that rising sea levels and lab land subsidence have increased flooding frequency and intensity in New Orleans, Louisiana. Satellite data can be used to support planning activities. Additionally, methodologies to determine areas of action included using land classification, NDVI, NDFI, and LST. The study found that green space decreased flood extent analysis saw an increasing trend. Eastern areas were more likely to have a risk of flooding and areas with lower permeability were shown to have an increased land surface temperature. Finally, the four end products that were produced are the urban tree canopy assessment, gray infrastructure and impervious surface, surface cover analysis, flood extent analysis, and surface heat assessment. Finally, on the right, you can see the three additional resources that we added, which includes the New Orleans um, Urban Development Case Study that we covered, um, an RCIS training if you want to further your learning on urban flooding, and an additional reading uh, that goes more in depth on urban flooding and related to um, policymakers. Finally, we're back to our where in the world is this sort of thumbnail slide, and if you were wondering, uh, this false cover color image was taken on August 29, 2020, using Landsat 8, NOA 820, and Suomi NPP. It shows the aftermath, aftermath and scars of Hurricane Laura on eastern Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas. Flooded areas are navy blue and black, vegetation is green, and clouds are cyan. Uh, thank you, and have a good day.